In this shoe last maker tutorial, I'm going to show you how to 3D print a shoe last with a working hinge, specifically an alpha hinge. A hinge such as this is necessary for removing a shoe last from most types of footwear after the footwear has been assembled on the shoe last. Here's a diagram of the alpha hinge we're going to be creating. It is designed in such a way that it can be easily 3D printed on an FDM 3D printer. The shoe last maker plugin for Rhinoceros 3D is used to design this type of alpha hinge. If you prefer not to get into doing this kind of CAD work, you can simply purchase the hinge shoe last design files via a link I'll provide in the description for this video. Here we're looking at the Rhinoceros 3D interface with the shoe last maker uh, panel docked on the right side and we've got the sneaker shoe last template model open. Uh, the first step then is to press the print button that brings up a form with a variety of options and we're working on the alpha joint and uh, there's just a few options here I will go over uh, that are particularly important. Uh, the first is to be able to toggle between metal spring and plastic spring. Um, as you do this, various settings get changed uh, to set you up either for uh, doing the alpha joint with a uh, conventional metal spring, which of course you'll have to source, or uh, the plastic spring, which can be 3D printed. And another setting is the standard thimble or a pipe thimble. Uh, the standard thimble is what you see on, on conventional shoe lasts. Uh, it can be substituted with a simple half inch copper pipe, and by choosing this option, that uh, will get you uh, some settings for the half inch copper pipe. One of these two is necessary if you intend to work on the shoe last on a lasting pin, um, as otherwise the lasting pin can break through the 3D printed plastic. Uh, the next uh, important setting uh, is the percent length along the dorsal profile of the cut position. Essentially, this positions how far the cut is towards the back of the last, from the back of the last to the front of the last. Negative is uh, moving the position backwards, and positive is moving the position forwards. Uh, another important setting is the disc wiggle room. This is essentially the tolerance, um, how much gap there is and, or play there is between uh, the discs that uh, form the pivoting part of the joint and the cavity in which they sit. And uh, increasing this number will uh, obviously make it a looser joint, but uh, that might be necessary if you don't have a very high accuracy 3D printer that you're working with. A couple more important settings are the pivot hole diameter, uh, which you see is set to four millimeters here, and the spring pin hole diameter on the shoe last, which is set to 3.3. Uh, so these right now are set to work uh, with a simple number eight deck screw. Um, this, uh, the pivot hole diameter is on the elliptical spring, the hole that's there, and this other setting is for the hole, the corresponding hole on the uh, walls of the shoe last. So if you're going to use a larger screw, you'd obviously want to increase these numbers to be able to accommodate a, longer, a larger screw. Or if you're going to be using a dowel pin, in fact, uh, the default setting, settings should work just fine with a uh, one eighth inch diameter dowel pin, uh, but uh, for some, if you want to get a stronger joint, you might move up to a one quarter inch dowel pin in which you'll need to change these two settings. And then the uh, the final setting on this form that I think is particularly important is the spring stretch, which right now is set to five millimeters. Um, if you increase that number, then in the uh, closed position, uh, you're going to be uh, ensuring that the elliptical spring is in more of a stretch position. So you're getting a tighter joint, essentially. Um, that's not going to work as well if you're using screws, but if you use a dowel pin, then you should be able to increase this number to get a, a tighter um, alpha joint. Once you're satisfied with your settings, you press the go button, and Shoe Last Maker starts designing the, the alpha hinge. And you can see here it is in uh, still oriented in the regular position. Uh, we've got the, the two uh, discs forming the, the pivot point of the joint and then the elliptical spring sitting in the center there and the, uh, the holes for the screws or pins and here is the, uh, the thimble hole and also over the side you have the, uh, the, position, uh, the various parts oriented for 3D printing to save you a little bit of time there. And now to get ready for the next step in the process, we'll export the various parts to STL format. Um, and I suggest doing the back and the front part of the last in one file, and then the 
um, elliptical spring in the disks in another file. And the reason being is it's sometimes uh, beneficial to use different materials. And so you want to print them in different sessions. And also the same disks in elliptical spring can be printed uh, many times because they are the same uh, for one set of last to the to the next, unless you're dramatically changing the size of the last, and so you could just print off a bunch of the, one of the, those in one shot, and then going forward, you only need to print the back and the front parts of the last. So I'll use the select the back and the front part and type the command export, and I will choose STL format here. It's already selected, and I've already actually exported this. So let's export it again and choose last hinged and uh, hit OK a couple times there, and then do the same thing for the, uh, the spring and the disks. Choosing, this is just uh, setting the tolerances, hitting OK on the STL file format. The second step in the process is to create the 3D printing code. This step will actually be your starting point if you are skipping the design step and working from purchased models directly. I'm using Prusa Slicer for the slicing software because the 3D printer I'm going to be using is a Prusa i3 MK3S Plus. This is an ideal 3D printer for making shoe lasts. Its size is just right to print a pair of average size shoe lasts in one go. It's also a highly proven and affordable printer with a great community and is no more or less than what you need to make shoe lasts. There's a lot of info out there for how to get started with uh, 3D printing and what the various settings do. Uh, so I'm not going to get into too much depth in, in that regard. I'm just going to focus on just a few of the settings that uh, are important when uh, 3D printing shoe lasts. Uh, so the first step is to uh, bring in your design. So these are STL files that we've exported. Now we're going to bring them in. Start off with the, the last files so you can see them there. And uh, we're going to print them separately than the um, the spring and the discs just because of the different printing settings and also filament material. For the shoe last, uh, the uh, suggested material is you could do it with PLA, but if you're planning on uh, hammering and nails in, then you're going to want to use PTG, which uh, is a, quite a bit less brittle and uh, will heal a little bit more after the, the nails have been pulled out. This material it's not as uh, soft as uh, conventional high density polyethylene that's used uh, in shoe lasts. Uh, but it's with, if you have sharp enough nails, it's not going to be an issue at all. Uh, so in the Prusa slicer, you choose the generic PETG, or if you have actually bought Prusa PETG, you can select that, or if there's other uh, some, something that's already listed in there that you've purchased, the same kind of thing. And uh, a 0 0.3 millimeter quality seems to be fine when you're using a 0 0.6 millimeter nozzle. 0 0.6 mil the default is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but this is not really high precision stuff. It's pretty... Uh, flexible as far as uh, you, you can still get a decent edge even with a 0.6 nozzle. And the infill, uh, you can do try a variety of infills. More important than the infill is to uh, set the perimeters. I think the default is 2, but depending on the nozzle diameter, if it's a 0.6 nozzle, about 8 millimeter, eight uh, perimeters works out because that gets you a wall thickness of around 5 millimeters, which is good for accepting nails. So, of course, that's going to slow you down a bit when you're printing uh, because it, the more perimeters, the more time it's going to take. And depending on the settings to you know, print a full pair of shoe lasts, it might take anywhere from, uh, around 24 hours. It could be plus or minus. But as I said before, if you're not playing on nailing, you can do it quite a bit faster printing thin wall PLA. And uh, if you do want to try to print faster, one setting you might uh, play around with is in the filament settings section called max volumetric speed. Uh, for some reason, this is set fairly low when it comes to PETG, and uh, it essentially determines how much uh, volume of material you're putting out. Uh, it's like a cap on how much uh, volume of material per second that is, can be put out by the nozzle. So you can increase that up. And uh, eventually, you know, you, you're going to start to have some issues if you go too high. So it's something you have to dial up gradually. So once you get your settings OK, you hit the, the slice button. And you can, uh, on the side, there is uh, this little arrow you can drag down to have a look at uh, what the various slice sections look like. And 
the, the infill uh, style is gyroid. That's the default. And that works pretty good. Uh, less issues with collisions and so on. And a nice strong infill. You could use the uh, try various infills anywhere from 5 up to maybe uh, 25. And when you're satisfied with what that looks like, you can hit the export G-code and then save it uh, onto uh, an SD card and send that over to your printer or maybe you have a, a Wi-Fi printer that you can send it directly by. And uh, once you've done that, then uh, it's time to get the uh, elliptical spring and the disks done. So you go over to the 3D editor view, you can delete the part and go back to uh, wherever you've got the STLs and just drag them in. And so there they are. And I suggest using P, uh, PLA to print the uh, this hardware because it's uh, quite a bit uh, stiffer than PETG and for a spring obviously you want it to be stiff. So we've switched over to uh, uh, PLA and I'm just using a generic PLA here and still a 0 0.6 nozzle with a 0.3 millimeter quality and you could uh, you could of course change that too. You could have sped up the, the previous print as well as this print if you use a, um, a higher layer of thickness. And you want to use a 100% infill, obviously, uh, and ask if you can switch from the gyroid to rectilinear, which is fine as for, for the infill pattern. And I uh, say so you want it to be solid, obviously you want the spring to be as strong as possible. And once you're done, you hit the slice, and then you can hit the export to save that somewhere. And you might actually want to print these in a in a batch because uh, they don't change so much from while uh, they don't need to change from one design to the next. Here's a time lapse video of the shoe last being printed on a Prusa 3D printer. As you can see, I'm using a build enclosure. This is important, uh, sometimes necessary when you have thicker wall thicknesses to prevent uh, warping uh, of the shoe last in separation from the build plate. Uh, the build uh, enclosure like this can be built from a lac table or a purchase from Prusa directly. Now in this final step is to assemble the shoe last after you've 3D printed your parts. Uh, you put, uh, the, the, and now first you put screws into the front and back holes of the shoe last. You want to uh, insert them all the way uh, to make sure that they pass directly through to the holes on the far side and to just kind of pre-thread them. And of course, instead of using screws, you could use dowel pins here. The screws I'm showing just because they're uh, easily sourced. These are number eight deck screws, uh, whereas the dowel pins uh, you want to, it could be swapped in with a 1 8 inch dowel pin or um, with a, uh, if you get it with a larger hole, you can do a quarter inch dowel pin. And st these steel dowel pins, they're stronger and they uh, don't bend as much and you can be ordered from somewhere like McMaster Car or Fastenal. So I, now you've backed them, so screws off so that just a tiny little, but one millimeter pokes through. So there's somewhere for the elliptical spring to catch as you insert the elliptical spring. And uh, now you... Uh, screw it in the rest of the way so that the elliptical spring can pivot about it. And now I'm inserting a um, the handling screw. This is just necessary for getting it on the next um, screw. So you, once again, that's just number eight deck screw. Then you put in the um, the discs for the pivoting point and put on the back part of the shoe last. Use the handling screw to pull it over top of the uh, the slot on the elliptical spring over top of that one inch or one millimeter protrusion from the back screw. Now uh, drill the back screw the rest of the way in. And you can remove the handling screw. And now you can close the shoe last. Uh, if you'd use dowel pins, you could get a tighter joint. Uh, but this is the still should be sufficiently tight. And now if you're planning on using a lasting pin, you want to uh, put in the half inch copper pipe and or unless you are doing this with a actual uh, thimble that you've ordered then we can spec that and now that's in and that is the completed shoe last with an alpha joint that's it for this shoe last maker tutorial um, if you found it helpful please like and subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching